Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of No Limits. My name is Scott Morgan, Routh, the Motor City Madmouth. The way I said it, no, I'm not Michael Buffer. Okay, let's get ready to rumble, but we're going to do something along those lines and talk about a deviation of how Michael Buffer would ever be associated with such sporting events. But we're going to do it with a guy by the name of VJ uh, Sh- Shrava. I hope I got that right, VJ. All right. You got it. Very good. All right. Bro- broadcasting rule number one don't mess up a name. And thankfully, I didn't mess up there. But anyways, VJ, we are so glad to have you on No Limits tonight. This No Limits broadcast uh, for uh, VJ will also be heard on the Sports Exchange as well, our premier uh, sports program. And when you understand the difference between both of them over the course of the next period of time, you'll definitely understand why. And first of all, VJ is the founder and CEO of Fanshore. He's a former NASA engineer. So when you talk about a background, I don't get any... Uh, more impressive than that and vj's whole idea here is he's going to talk about ticket protection which is a form of ticket insurance now just for a lot of you folks should know that vj has appeared on nbc sports he's been featured on nbc sports espn nba.com indie star sports which is part of the usa today network yahoo sports bbc silicon valley business journal and forbes I would say that's an all-star team filled with ways to promote what we have here. And, VJ, glad to have you on No Limits. Hey, Scott. Thanks a lot for having me, and thanks for that awesome introduction. You're very, very welcome. Well, VJ, first of all, I've got to ask you, how did you come up with the idea of the company? Yeah, that's uh, it's a great and loaded question. Uh, so I'm, like you, I'm, I'm a big NBA basketball fan. Uh, I mean, who isn't, right? And, and so I... You know, like many fans, uh, go to a lot of games, um, spend a good amount of money purchasing tickets to these games, mainly to see some of my favorite players uh, in the NBA. And um, quite often, uh, I've, I've experienced this pain point over and over again, where I spend a bunch of money on a ticket hoping to see a particular, you know, top star player, whether it's like a LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, you know, somebody of that caliber. And I get to the game and I find out they're not going to play. So I've, I've experienced that, you know, many times after buying tickets to a game. And so it kind of germinated in my head uh, that, you know, there's no recourse when this happens, right? You, you spend all this money, you commute in long distances through traffic uh, to get to a 7 o'clock or 7.30 tip-off time. And you get there and, you know, you can't do anything about the experience you end up getting when a star player sits out. So I came up with the idea of uh, a ticket reimbursement service where you get your money back on a ticket if a certain star player doesn't play. Now, this is an issue that I, I started the company because I noticed that it wasn't just me who, you know, got mad when that happened. Uh, so uh, when... when um, uh, when in 2012 there was an incident when the San Antonio Spurs sat out four of their top guys, Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, Tony Parker, uh, and Danny Green, um, against the Miami Heat, and there was a nationally televised game on TNT. And so the San Antonio Spurs were actually fined by then Commissioner David Stern about $250,000 because, uh, in Stern's words, the, the Spurs did a disservice to the, to the league, its fans, and didn't inform the NBA in a timely manner that that uh, the Spurs would do that, uh, make that lineup change that day. So uh, since then, the teams have kind of taken on this approach. Uh, the reason why the Spurs do that, they're kind of, uh, you know, they're very forward thinking in terms of how they manage their players and they want to manage their players' health over the long course of a season. Of course, they make the playoffs. They've made the playoffs every year for the last, you know, twenty something years. So they realize that by not playing their top guys every single game, their top players end up maintaining their longevity over the course of a season. And so, a lot of teams have started adapting that strategy. You know, you look at uh, today's game where Kawhi Leonard generally sits out. You know, a lot of games, back to back nights, and things like that. So, from a team perspective, it's actually you know today's smart strategy right uh you know preserve your players so that they're healthy come june when when it's time to play for a championship but it, it's a different time today than it was you know five six seven years ago you had you had guys like kobe bryant 
<laughs> who said, you know, I, I, I never would have done load management, right? Uh, you, you know, you got paid to play certain games. But in today's game, uh, teams prioritize people's health a lot more. So the problem when that happens is fans who are at those games when players rest um, are suffering in the end. So they buy a certain, you know, they pay their money to go to a certain game to see a certain player, and if that player doesn't play, they're disappointed in the end. So that is a long story short for why I came up with uh, Fancher. Amazingly enough, you founded the company in 2018. You launched it in 2019. The incident took place, obviously, in 2012. And I can I, I can definitely say one thing. A.J. Green's consecutive NBA game will never be broken thanks to load management because A.J. Green was definitely the type of guy I always loved with the Lakers. You know, he's the type of guy that never got the publicity during showtime, but yet all he did was show up game in and game out. So with that said... Okay, I, I'll go to, to a Michael Jordan who says, we pay you to play 82 games. And I'll tell you one thing, he ripped the NBA for load management on the air. Uh, I actually ripped the NBA for load management on the air and through editorial. So I, I'm with Michael Jordan. If you can play 82, you play him unless you definitely can't play. And another, So let me ask you, from a com- competition standpoint, do you find that there's a lot of companies that are actually out there doing this? Or are you one of the earlier ones? Because at some point or another, I'm sure that there'll probably be some competition. What do you know about that? Yeah, so that's a good question. I I think this is an issue that has, uh, there's a lot of delicacies to it. Um, So actually, one of the reasons I started it was because um, I I actually know some folks in the NBA, and I I talked to them about this exact issue because this was something, load management is something that's obviously uh, was a very critical issue that they were trying to solve. And one thing they said was, you know, we can't really, they were kind of caught between a rock and a hard place. On one hand, they had to respect that teams and players, um, the the strategy behind it, there was science behind, uh, you know, load management, right? And and so they had to respect that. But at the same time, they have to appease to fans and, you know, TV networks and and everyone who has vested interest in, in a star player playing. So there, there hasn't been a very easy solution to all this um, at all. So this is something that, you know, teams and the league have thought about, but because of they have to appease some multiple kind of stakeholders and they have to abide by certain messaging. Um, you know, one, one element of the messaging is they can't condone rest at all. Uh, and the second of which is you can't really... Um, Say that a particular player is the reason why ticket prices are the way they are. They just they just can't really come out right and say that. When you go see the Lakers, your ticket says this is a Lakers game. It doesn't say it's a LeBron game, right? So on one hand, it's it's kind of difficult to come up with that concept of of insurance without you know upsetting one stakeholder or another and keeping consistent with your messaging there. So. I I understand that you know if if there are copycats that's that's just the way the business world works but right. we think we've gotten out to a a decent head start that's that's one thing and and the other thing is what what really differentiates us is the ability to predict how likely it is that a star player might miss a game so in 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 order to do that I had to recruit kind of a very smart team uh, actually consisting of other NASA engineers and Lockheed Martin folks uh, on the machine learning model that actually powers the ability to predict when players might sit out of games and right, using that algorithm we uh, we package that into a ticket insurance right which, w- w- which we'll get into later on so you're saying that it, there's no question even though Fancher is doing it that there could be competitors out there but you feel like you have this thing down to a science where go to somebody else but ultimately you have the enough confidence and belief in your system that you know nobody can stop competition from doing what you're doing but it goes back to the old analogy what separates the men from the boys kind of thing basically isn't that that's right. That's right. I, I think like it's it's w- w- my point with the, with the the NBA and the teams is that it's it's not an easy solution to come up with, right? And and it's hard to predict when guys sit out and how do you adjust your pricing models and things like that. So it, it's it's not as straightforward as as it seems to be. Is is kind of where I'm getting at. That's fine. Okay, so you're yeah. you're doing the NBA first, and then you talk about the NFL later. Why don't you go ahead and explain the logic behind that? Yeah, so the NBA is obviously the most star-driven market, so uh, this is an issue where it was most prevalent in terms of star guys sitting out, um, especially at the last minute during the load management era. 
And, you know, ticket prices are very much dictated by uh, the demand to see certain star players. So uh, we have a young man who's a UC Berkeley PhD candidate. He's a six-year PhD candidate at UC Berkeley who conducted uh, some research on that exact subject of how are ticket prices affected when certain star players sit out. And what, what his research showed is that ticket prices across the secondary ticket marketplace can drop up to 25% when it's announced that a star player misses a game. So there's an actual quantitative shift in the NBA when a star player misses a game. Now, in other sports, that uh, although it doesn't quite have the same effect for most players, with the exception of... You know, a few guys in the NFL, uh, you know, star quarterbacks, star running backs, like your, you know, a caliber of Tom Brady and Cam Newton. Like cert- certain guys have that effect, but in the NBA, that's that effect is much more pervasive than in any other sport. Well, that's a good point because let's face it, reality: an NBA roster consists of about 15 guys, and at any given time, they could make a difference. The NFL, you're looking at 50 plus. So yeah, I think right. your percentages, if you let the numbers or analytics be what they are, it would be a lot easier for you to make credible predictions with a smaller roster than it is with a much bigger one. So, but no, but you're looking to do the NFL later, is that correct? So uh, when you graduate from the NBA to the NFL, what will make your model work? Yeah, that's that's a good point. So I, I think from a from a like player based protection service, we will offer player-based ticket protection for star players but what what we want to do in the nfl is actually assess you know things that are more granular than that uh for example predicting how likely it is that tom brady's going to pass 300 yards uh, in a game or mahomes or any of those quarterbacks reaching certain goals in terms of uh, how many passing yards they get or how many touchdown passes they throw, stuff like that. So we're, we're getting, uh, so, so the demand on the NFL side is mostly related to, you know, player performance. There doesn't seem to be as much of a, of a market for, uh, whether a player plays or not, with the exception of a few guys, right? Like your, you know, you know, Aaron Rodgers, for example, if he, if he is questionable for a, for a game, uh, for a, uh, for, for, for a game, then he, you know, obviously ticket prices can see a certain effect or people who are fans who bought tickets, they potentially are, you know, upset when he doesn't end up playing. So the NFL is, I think, the next, if, if you look at sports in order of, like, what's the most star-driven market, uh, the NFL is a logical step after the NBA, but our plan is to shuffle out, and, and I'm sure we'll get into this later, um, a whole other set of products that that we think might have use cases for the NFL in terms of our ability to um, predict player availability and their production as well. Yeah, you know, I mean, without a doubt, you only got 16, 17 games going into next year, 17. So, yeah, to go out there and predict games would be probably uh, miss. Uh, wouldn't really matter now. But think about the average fan that goes down there and they sell their tickets before the game, uh, you know, to try to get out of them. Do you find that your model here certainly takes the, uh, a little bit of value away from the secondary street model, knowing full well that somebody, and I know we're going to get into this later, but you brought up an interesting point. Now, all right, all of a sudden, this guy's not coming down there to giving away their tickets for practically next to nothing because guess what? Um, this particular player didn't show up. Why don't you explain how that would work, knowing that people are buying tickets, or maybe I'm not talking to scalpers because scalpers are going to get practically nothing knowing that there was an unexpected decision as such. Yeah, so I mean, you bring up the whole premise of the, the ticket protection, which is how can I control the value on my ticket right. upon a, an announcement that a player is going to miss a game? And so what we what we created, and this is something that was live until until COVID when fans can no longer purchase tickets to games, if we can get into that. Um, but before COVID, when you know the, we, we actively were selling our ticket protection, uh, the, the kind of the example I'll walk you through is, let's say you're going to a Miami Heat game, right? And let's say the Lakers are coming to town, and, of course, a lot of Heat fans will want to see LeBron, who were fans of him when he was in Miami, you know, make his return to Miami once a year now that he's on the Lakers on the Western Conference. Right, right. Um, so let's say you bought a ticket that was $100, and you wanted to make sure LeBron plays. So the way our protection model works is you pay us a small premium, which is a couple percent of your ticket price, 
uh, to make sure LeBron plays. And on average, it's between 10 and 15 percent. So to make the math simple, let's say you bought a hundred dollar ticket. You tell us that you want to go see LeBron and you bought a ticket off of Ticketmaster, StubHub, you know, wherever you got your ticket. Uh, you tell us how much your ticket was, the fact that you want to see LeBron and what game you're going to. And based on those three things, our machine learning algorithm gives you a price to pay for that protection. So let's say it's $10 for the sake of easy math. You pay us $10 and you are rest assured that if LeBron doesn't play, you get $100 back on your ticket. Interesting. So that, 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 that's, the, that's the simple explanation for how it works. And we, we offer different reimbursement options because you know some people don't want to insure the full price of their ticket maybe they only want half of their ticket price back so we offer the flexibility of 25 percent and 50 percent reimbursement options as well right which we'll get into shortly so that's what you're telling me how the ticket protection model works and you're saying that the hypothetical example that we're talking about is that we're going to a miami heat game lebron decides to take the night off so then how do they get their uh, ticket costs re- reimbursed yeah, so that's a good question. So the way you would uh, make this work is you, you first you buy your ticket off of whatever preferred ticket retailer that you usually buy tickets from, whether it's Ticketmaster, StubHub, Vivid Seats, uh, any of those ticket sites are fine as long as you actually have, you know, a, a proof that you that you bought the ticket. That's, that's the one thing we ask for um, if you ever request money back from us. So once you buy your ticket, then you come to fanfare.com. You go to our ticket protection uh, product, and then you you give us those three pieces of information: the the player that you want to go see, how much the ticket costs, and what game you're going to. And then you go through our purchase process uh, through our website from there. And once you're confirmed, uh, we, we you know once you submit your request to purchase protection, we approve it, and then you're good to go. Then then you can go to the game, rest assured that your favorite player will play or you'll, you'll get some consolation back on your ticket. And if, for example, if LeBron ends up sitting out that hypothetical game that we talked about, what you do is you come back to our site, you let us know that you went to that game and LeBron missed the game, which is pretty easy to confirm on our end. So you, right, right. We, we issue you a reimbursement right there and then on the spot. So it's a little better than other types of insurance products where you have to file a claim and fill out a big form and, you know, give a doctor's note. You know, there's all these, there's all these uh, other, uh, you know, fine print with insurance products that we don't have. Like, oh, all we care about is did you purchase the, you know, the, the ticket protection and did your player miss the game? And, if those things are true, then you get your money back. Yeah, so, all right, let's use another hypothetical. Ron James decides not to play in advance. Do I have to surrender my ticket to get my money back? Yeah, that's a good question as well. So sometimes players sit out of games not because of load management, right? Sometimes they get injured uh, in advance of your game. But most of the time, most uh, most of our customers have usually buy tickets about two weeks in advance. So sometimes it'll be announced five or six days in advance that your favorite player won't play. But you're still stuck because you you bought whatever you know price you paid to buy your ticket. That's the price you paid, and and so unless you bought our service, you're not going to get your money back. So you don't have to. Here's the beauty of what we have: you don't have to give your ticket back to us when uh, uh, your favorite player misses the game. The beauty of our service is you get to go to the game no matter what. And as a consolation prize, if your favorite player happens to not play. You still get your money back, so it's it's kind of a win win, and uh, at least we think so. Well, the main thing is, is this: the only way you figure out how LeBron James is, go ahead and look at the box score. He played. Guess what? Bingo! No problem, right? Right. That thing called exactly. a box score. I don't care if you're in 2020, whether you're in 1970. That thing called a box score does work. So, what's the catch? Is there any situation where I don't get my money back? Yeah, that's a good question. So the the only times we've run into issues is when is during the actual purchasing of a ticket. So a lot of people try to get smart and they see an announcement, late breaking announcement that you know Giannis isn't playing or LeBron isn't playing. Right? Uh, you, th- sometimes they'll try to go to our site and insure that player for for a ticket they already have. And so fortunately, our model is sophisticated enough where it would prevent you from making that purchase in the first place. But if, if there was any evidence that a fan bought our protection after they already knew 
that somebody was going to be out, that's the only time that we don't honor your reimbursement request. But otherwise, if we approve your purchase, you're good to go. Um, and, and mostly it's just to protect us on our end, right? If we, if we were reimbursing everybody, you know, after the fact they already found out that, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give you an analogy, like hurricane insurance, you can only get, you know, th- there's usually a 30 day to 60 day waiting period before you're able to buy hurricane insurance. If you buy hurricane insurance four days before you, you know that a hurricane's coming, chances are he won't be able to get that insurance. So same thing with us, right? Like it's designed for people who don't know if somebody's going to play or not. So the only times we run into that is when people try to, you know, obviously insure their ticket after they already know somebody's sitting out. Do you find a lot of times that, you know, it would be hard for anybody to stay in business if you had to give out more reimbursements than possible. Do you know what I mean? Where, you know, how would you stay in business if you find yourself reimbursing everything on the planet? Or do you have it financially, um, your business model so set where you're going to be solvent? Do you know what I mean? Without having to give yeah. up too many reimbursements. Yeah, that's a great question. And, and we've done our homework in terms of our portfolio risk. Um, so we've, we've kind of back tested our model to make sure that if we were to get into a rainy day situation where, you know, like a high caliber player is out for a critical game um are we going to be kind of upside down uh we've asked we've asked ourselves those questions and we've uh, performed integrated analyses to make sure that uh we we always come out ahead in that regard and say and stay afloat right like if you know if if every if we were giving everybody money back on their ticket like you said we wouldn't be in business very long right so we make sure the math works out on our end yeah, you know, it's funny. When we talk about the what's a catch, you know, I had a situation years ago when I had back surgery, and I actually invested into credit card insurance, and I thought that, you know, I was going to be it was going to be a lengthy recovery. Now, I'm not going to mention the bank because I don't want to go out there and get uh, uh, sued for any uh, slander, but I will mention that in this particular situation, VJ, that the branch manager did not know her product, sold it to me anyways, and I, I unfortunately was paying on the insurance, and after the fact, it put me in a very precarious position. And I'm telling you one thing: after that situation, I vowed to never get credit card insurance again. And it also tells you that some of the people that are being trained maybe not even know the products that they're selling in the first place, which could put people in a precarious spot, like I was. Thankfully, right. you know, I mean, I bit the bullet from that experience and vowed never to do it again. So I guess. Your advice to anybody else is that you guys are very trained to make sure that this situation doesn't occur to your customers, aren't you? Yes, we are. And, and I mean, that's a good point. A lot of times when you buy insurance, you don't know what the claim process is actually going to be like, kind of like right. what I alluded to earlier. And a lot of times when, they, when you are eligible for a claim, you have to, you know, there's all kinds of barriers that the insurance company purposely throws your way. And they're kind of hoping... Like, eh, maybe, maybe they'll think it's too much work and uh, too much of a hassle to get their money back. So that's what we wanted to avoid altogether, and that's why we think that a product based on if a player played or not, like you said, check the box score, they didn't play, uh, right? So that's the, <laughs> it's pretty simple uh, on our end to, to verify that process. So for, for us, the claims process is meant to be extremely easy. Well, I mean, insurance companies go out of business if they don't pay their claims in a situation where you're dealing with a potential bank where the people aren't uh, trained enough to sell your product. They do it anyways. That's another story. But in your situation, it seems like you have a lot of these things, which is probably why it took you a year to get the thing going to make sure that you didn't have any. Uh, you, you crossed your T's and dotted your I's to make sure. So with that said, do right. I have to buy my ticket through you or do, uh, does it matter where I buy my ticket? Yeah, um, so it doesn't matter where you buy your ticket as long as you can show us some form of proof that you actually bought the ticket and you, you know, the the amount of money that you claim that you paid for it is is on the ticket, right? So you can't just say like, oh, I bought a I bought a courtside seat for ten thousand dollars and not be able to show us that you bought a ten thousand dollar courtside seat and and expect us to pay you back for that. That that's our only condition is that you're able to prove. You know the tic- that the ticket's yours, and you you paid what you claimed that you that it cost. So that that's that's the only uh, that's that's all we ask for. You can buy your ticket off Ticketmaster. You can buy it off StubHub. You can buy it off uh, other ticket retailers. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Okay. All right. Well, you you talked about before, so let's go into more detail a little bit 
about the reimbursement. You have a 25% reimbursement, 50%, 100%. Now, why don't you let the fans out there know why you broke it down into three categories? Yeah, so we understand that many people, for, for certain guys, maybe it doesn't totally ruin their experience if, if a certain key guy sits out of a game. So instead of us charging you for the full price of ensuring your full ticket cost, we give you that flexibility so that you're the one that tells us how much you think you should get reimbursed if a certain player doesn't play, right? So uh, maybe if LeBron misses the game, that completely ruins your experience, but maybe there's some other, you know, top 20 players that maybe they, if they miss the game, you're a little disappointed, but maybe it's not the end of the world for you. So that's why we offer those different options as well. Do you find that when you have these three different reimbursement options that you have recurring business as a result? Do you have, yeah. Do, I guess that's an interesting point. I mean, it's not a one-time uh, thing that they can go back to as often as they want if they feel like uh, that what they what you're doing is what they ter- definitely believe because a lot of time recurring business uh, is uh, another sign of loyalty. Absolutely. Uh, and we have had those uh, loyal customers. We've had in, in a couple of particular cases, even though we launched very recently, like in time for the 2019 to 2020 season, which was cut short, obviously, um, we have had folks uh, insure several tickets throughout the season. There were season ticket holders. Um, in one particular case, uh, a gentleman was very disappointed that Kawhi Leonard was going to be sitting out a lot of games and potentially every at least one of every back-to-back set. So um, that particular person ended up insuring multiple tickets through us. So in terms of like the loyalty of it, that's the beauty of it, right? Like It doesn't have to be a one-time deal, as, as you kind of said. Well, you know, I, I know we're going to talk about Kawhi Leonard a lot, and I think he's a definitely the prototypical about it. But you talk about a person who, uh, you know what, if he wins a title with the Clippers, he deserves a he, – he, he'd get in the Hall of Fame faster than you can snap your finger. But think about Kawhi Leonard, folks. Goes to the Toronto Raptors is basically a rental, set out 20 games and won a title. And preferential treatment, call what you want, but the Raptors knew what they were getting – and they monitored his minutes, and the Clippers were willing to do it. But Kawhi Leonard is a perfect example why VJ was able to really start a business because of uh, this kind of thing. I mean, you don't know. I mean, not that you didn't have a myriad of reasons to do it, like the Spurs and the Heat provided the impetus to do it, okay? But Kawhi Leonard, to me, is the type of guy that you build a business around this because he's a superstar player and yet the Raptors look like geniuses hey we'll take our one title in the history of our franchise even because he played and performed in the postseason and built a and beat a heavily favored Milwaukee Bucks team with Giannis Antetokounmpo and was able to do it Uh, you talk about underdogs they were definitely at you know what you, you you touched on many things and 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 one of which being like why we're even in business, which is fair to say. Um, but the, the the Kawhi winning a championship is very significant. The guy, the fact that he missed twenty two games in that year in his rental year, as you put it, and you know Toronto knew what they were doing. Obviously, they, he gave him a great chance to win a title that year, and he delivered. Um, what that did was permanently change the way teams looked at their lineups and how they manage it day to day. So you looked on one end and you saw Kawhi, who was well rested throughout the year and was able to get through the grind of the playoffs. And then on the other side, in the Eastern Conference Finals, you had Giannis, who maybe wasn't load managed throughout the year, although that's obviously been changing. Uh, he's he's sat out a couple more games than he usually does this year. So. He was arguably getting burned out over the course of that series, and the Raptors ended up reeling off four games in a row after going down 0-2. So what that does is, you know, it's a copycat league, and people change their strategies. Like front offices, they notice these things, and they, you know, they realize that their star players maybe don't have to play every single regular season game if it means that they have a better chance of winning a championship. So this, you know, Kawhi Leonard. Uh, Even though, like you said, uh, like we were talking about the 2012 incident with the Spurs, Kawhi Leonard has really hammered at home that you could be a superstar player that doesn't have to play every single game if it means that you can potentially win a title. Can I give you some good advice? Sure. Send Greg Popovich a Christmas card every single year, would you? Because (laughs) the reason why I would do that is because not only that, 
you know, Kawhi Leonard didn't feel that Popovich and the Spurs were handling his injury situation well, which is why he wanted to leave in the first place. And that's why he got shipped north of the border to Canada. You know, so you talk about a domino effect. Craig Popovich, you know, mishandled the Kawhi situation. And he went to Toronto. Toronto took a chance. Hey, I, I still think the Raptors ought to give a statue out in Toronto, even if it was a one-year deal. Uh, and retire his jersey. If you can win a championship uh, in an eight place where most people probably don't want to play, although Toronto is a good basketball town, and a few people realized that many years ago, the Buffalo Braves played there uh, in Buffalo, which is only an hour away, so they still brought a championship to that part of the country, so to speak, near Canada, you, you know, in the Buffalo region. So he uh, went ahead and uh, impacted a region. So yeah, son Greg Popovich, VJ, a Christmas card, and I think you can definitely afford it since he helped put you in business. Not that your NASA credit uh, background didn't hurt your cause any either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I actually joked around uh, with uh, R.C. Buford, who's the president of the San Antonio Spurs, about it when I first told him about the idea. He kind of owned up to it immediately. He's like, "Yeah, you know what? This this was this was kind of our doing." <laughs> so I, I thought that was kind of funny too. Well, how about the ironies and the parallels? My goodness, VJ, that's what we do here on No Limits, okay? Uh, and which, like I said, will also be heard on the Sports Exchange. So let's talk about an example of a type of insurance that I like it, but I don't ever get travel insurance. I think travel insurance myself is a waste of money. Not that you travel agents want to hear what I have to say about not buying travel agents. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll go back to my thought. I think travel insurance myself, personally, for the most part, when you're buying it, flying is a waste. And I'm not a travel insurance person, but I would most I would likely be one for fan sure because of the way that sports is being played here in the millennials because it's a totally different animal. I'm going to go back to the fact that the A.J. Greens of the NBA aren't walking through the building. Again, we're not going to get into baseball because baseball, you have too many games to even judge playing games in the first place. Hockey, I don't know if you're further along in the process to even think about it. So you're, you're on the right track with the NFL later and the NBA is your primary. So let's talk about travel insurance for a moment. What are your thoughts about whether it is something that you ever thought about in the process with travel insurance compared to what you're doing now? Yeah, the, the travel insurance uh, is, a, is a decent analogy in that what we're trying to do is become an option on every ticket marketplace. So a lot of our users that came to our site, they were kind of like, hey, well, this would be really nice if I was able to buy my ticket and buy the ticket protection at the same time. So that's precisely, you know, in this early stage, what we're trying to do is partner with some of these bigger ticket retailers or any existing ticket retailer and give them kind of that one-click add-on option that you see in the typical travel insurance setting where if you're buying a plane ticket, you you get to that last page before you hit buy and it, you know, and you get prompted with a, an alert that says, hey, uh, let me protect my travel ticket for X number of dollars in case anything happens. So I firmly believe that that model would work with, with us, especially because this problem relates to a heck of a lot of sports fans uh, with regard to wanting to see a particular star player. So we believe down the road we will be one of those one-click add-on options on standard ticket retail sites. Well, it's not like your tracking process is that complicated because this is not rocket science. It really isn't. The bottom line is is if you purchased uh, if you purchased this particular insurance or protection, well, we can use it either way, then you get paid. That's all there is to it. They just have to pr- show you proof of purchase. Is that, isn't that what they usually say, proof of purchase? But not only from a ticket standpoint, do you find that a lot of times you run into a situation where they actually have to go ahead and scan it to you that you went ahead and uh, have proof of purchase? Because I know a lot of people will say, you know, all right, you purchased protection, but send me proof that you bought the ticket. And nowadays with cam scanner and all that, there's ways so that you get it, or does it get that complicated? Uh, it, it, for, for us, uh, we try not to make it very complicated. All we do is just ask you to either, like you said, like, you know, scan it on your phone and send us a picture of either the ticket itself or the barcode that you get um, right. on your mobile device or, you know, anything like that. We, we, we're generally pretty flexible as long as, as, long as it's there. So um, that, that so far hasn't been an issue at all, fortunately. 
All right, because a lot of times people will wonder. I mean, listen, everybody can trust each other to a certain level, but hello, this is 2020. Okay, not Hugh Downs, but 2020. Okay, do we trust everybody? No, we all know that our computer's over there uh, out in the San Francisco Bay Area, which is pretty much where you're out in the Silicon Valley area is where you're at. But the reality of the situation is sometimes people want proof of purchase. But if you're saying it doesn't get that way, that's fine. But again, I know you can track it through your computer if they bought it. But, you know, you have to be able to make sure you cover all bases nonetheless. Anyhow, you follow me? Absolutely. And again, it isn't rocket scientists at all. So, all right, with that said, let's talk about sports being up in the air. What are you guys doing while the pandemic is going on? Yeah, so that's that's really the elephant in the room here, right? Like while fans are not going to games right now, like what you know, what what use is a ticket protection service if you can't even buy a ticket? Well, the the the, the important thing to know uh, as far as fan share goes is we're not just selling a ticket protection product. So our machine learning algorithm that we developed is really designed to predict the likelihood of star players sitting, uh, right? Uh, Turns out we do a lot more things than that. We provide all kinds of insights as far as uh, player minutes, uh, how they're reallocated in the, in the event that a star player sets out. You know, all these different things that are of interest if you're a fantasy player or a gambler, uh, right? So uh, we are building other products uh, for both the NBA and NFL at the moment where we provide uh, player-based insights um, and as well as scenario-based insights. And what I mean by that is uh, having something handy for you to look at when you're wanting to, you know, pick what defense to use for your fantasy football team or if you're about to place a bet on your favorite football team for, for a game. Um, so one thing we're, we're actually uh, partnering with a company called Trend Sports, um, who, who are now a part of Fansure. So what they what they have is a betting insights app um, that allows you to self source your own bets. So in other words, you can you can use the app to generate your own insights uh, for upcoming games. And so let's say you want to see how if you if you're like a Patriots fan and you want to see how the Patriots do, you know, on the road uh, against teams that are over 500. Well, you can self source that bet on using our app the trends app and it, it would tell you like hey the pats are seven and two in those situations uh and i'm just making that up but you can source your own bets and be able to uh use that to your advantage uh, so to speak so we are putting out a lot of different products for both the fantasy and gambling entities and we are working you know uh behind the scenes with a couple of uh data provision companies that find our data interesting and want more you know, data-driven information on how likely it is that star players uh, may or may not sit out. So there's there's a lot of other things going on on top of the ticket protection that we feel <laughs> you know, are going to keep us around. And, and then, hey, when fans are able to come back to games, our ticket protection product will be out there for anybody to use. So uh, that's not going anywhere. Yeah, I find that your situation is very similar to mine. You know, I'm in a situation now where on all my broadcast here – that I'm trying to find creative ways to keep it interesting. And it sounds like to me what you guys are doing while you're uh, while the pandemic is going on is if there's ever a time to explore and search for ideas, you're probably doing the same thing. And when we have games to work on, that's when you get probably a lot busier. But you've got to find a way to make sure that that downtime doesn't become downtime. And, and if I'm understanding what you're saying, VJ, that's exactly what you're doing. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, we, we we have a lot of yeah, you know, there's there's a lot of different verticals with which our business can create, right? So our our model which has predictive insights are of use to more than just the the ticketing segment. And and if we kind of zoom out here, Scott, the the issue of star players missing games goes way beyond just ticketing, right? You, you, you know, fans aren't the only ones affected by that. Uh, you look at TV networks, they get affected because they're counting on a certain amount of ratings and ad dollars and things like that. So if, if a star player sits out, they might not reach those quotas in that sense. Um, and if you look at the fantasy and gambling side of things, obviously a star player sitting out has a lot of implications and causes a lot of volatility right. with things like betting lines and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, if you're looking at a Clippers game with Kawhi, 
they're you know if if Kawhi is projected to play, then the lines heavily favor uh, the Clippers. They'd be at like a minus six or a minus eight against most opponents. But if he doesn't play, then it's more like you know a plus two or a plus four, right? So we are able to produce insights that help um, both users on the on the fantasy and gambling side as well as the operators. You know, amazingly enough, as we continue this discussion, you remind me of Moneyball a little bit because. I think Billy Bean of the Oakland A's had to go ahead and find a way to uh, juggle the money around so that he developed an, uh, you know, a, a winning formula with the A's. Obviously, it's hard for the Oakland A's to compete with the larger markets, but yet he's able to do it by putting a competitive ball club up, knowing full well that their stadium, the old Oakland Coliseum, certainly doesn't provide enough revenue, so you have to make a lot out of nothing. And to me, that's where your money ball... Ver- by analyzing every single number imaginary uh, creates what you're trying to accomplish, and I commend you for that. So I think when you talk about the TV networks and everybody affected, it's called that old domino effect theory where, you know, a lot of things can happen if certain ways go there. So, yeah, of course, TV ratings, we all know that TV ratings are going to be affected if a superstar is not there. You aren't old enough to realize that, back in 1979 that the NBA was on tape delay but before Larry Bird and Magic Johnson came into the league, okay, they're the ones that the NBA was on the verge of bankruptcy. So, you know, I mean and the last thing the NBA needs right now is to continue to see itself in a free fall because of load management. I mean, no matter what anybody's going to say about this broadcast, okay, then we can slice it nine million different ways Load management, to me, is the uh, core of what we're talking about. And, you know, ticket protection insurance is really what you're going to get out of it. We're just trying to break it down for you in different ways so you understand all the idiosyncrasies involved with it. So with that said, VJ, let's talk about the premise of the company um, is to predict when the guys will sit out. You say it carries over to fantasy sports with that machine learning model, and it has multiple applications. I want you to go into a lot more detail about that. Well, I'll, I'll tell you whatever details I can. <laughs> uh, okay. A, a lot of it is you know within our proprietary algorithm, but what I will say is um, our model incorporates a lot of different variables. So there's there's obvious ones that I can tell you about, right? Like obviously, if it's a back to back game. You know, a guy's going to have a higher propensity to sit out of those particular games. Or let's say you're uh, playing, uh, I'm going to pick on the Knicks, right? Um, and, and playing them has uh, obviously uh, doesn't uh, impact your, uh, if you're in a place where you're about to lock up the number one seed, for example, let's take the Warriors from not this past year, but the, the previous five years. So let's say the Warriors just run away with the best record and they're playing the Knicks or something. And you know, obviously that leads to a higher propensity of, you know, a guy like Kevin Durant or Steph Curry taking the night off because it doesn't, frankly, impact uh, their standings or any implications as far as their playoff seating goes. So there's a lot of different things. Um, uh, we, we have uh, dozens of different inputs that go into the predictive model, um, and that is what's, you know, really the, the moat for what we're doing um, in terms of being able to help out you know, other folks in the fantasy and gambling world that are that are trying to figure this out, right? They're they're also trying to figure out uh, how star players affect um, their day to day lineups and betting lines and things like that. Okay, well, that's a good summary right there. So, with that said, where can we see some of your betting insights? How can we ac- access it? Yeah, absolutely. So you can go to our website at venture.com. Uh, we have an insights page that, that kind of walks through some of our insights there. And like I touched on before, we also have an app that's called Trends Sports. Uh, so T-R-N-D-S, so Trends without the E. Uh, it's available on iOS, and that's ready to go for both the NBA restart in Orlando as well as the upcoming NFL season. So uh, yeah, you should be able to find everything you need on there. And of course, we're always happy to provide any customized, you know, data sets and things that people are interested in. Um, so, uh, so that's something that we're doing on the regular. And we're happy to talk to anybody if, if you're a gambler, or if you're a fantasy player, or you're, you're just plain interested in finding out our analytics on, you know, how often star players are sitting out. Feel free to email us at info at fancher.com. 
Uh, let me uh, let me ask you a couple of other things that just came to mind. Okay, we, we're talking about the NBA restart. Now we know we got COVID nineteen. You know, we don't know whether or not this restart is going to lead to an end anyhow because of the unknown variables. But let's just say hypothetically, although there's no fans involved, that you would have Giannis Antetokounmpo and LeBron James. Uh, one of them gets COVID nineteen. Boy, that t- under normal circumstances an injury, let's just say an injury during normal times, how would you be able to go ahead and reimburse or what were your thoughts if a scenario like that were to take place where one superstar is out versus the other one? Yeah, so so are you taking a scenario where somebody had previously like uh, protected Giannis or protected LeBron for a, for a ticket purchase? Yeah, more or less. I mean, obviously nobody's, you're not protecting anybody during the restart, but I'm just using a hypothetical no. situation. Yeah, no, that, I mean, you bring up, you, you bring up a point and that's something that, you know, in 2020, we kind of have to, we all have to adjust here, right? So one of the biggest adjustments we'll make is figuring out how to incorporate the uncertainty based on somebody getting tested positive for COVID-19, right? right? And so there is going to be an element of risk there because that's something that's, you know, brand new to, to all of us. And it's not, there's no previous history of it. So no matter how great our historical uh, data is and our, our tens of thousands of observation points, like none of it's going to factor in COVID-19. So we're going to have to really think quickly on how we're going to address that when it comes to our ticket protection model. Um, what we're What we're hoping is that you know, people who get tested for COVID-19, uh, those announcements are made, you know, enough in advance before people are able to lock in their ticket protection with us. But that's wishful thinking. And so, you know, we'll, we'll deal with that when the time comes. But uh, it, it's a good point. It's it's uh, it's very unshattered territory, not just for us, but for, for everybody, right? Yeah, well, I mean, last year, Kevin Durant uh, got hurt. You know, what about injury up? Uh- what about injury reimbursement? Uh, you know, Kevin. Yeah. yeah, that to me, I think the one thing we should talk about injury reimbursement. You know, he uh, obviously suffered a season end, uh, a major injury that knocked him out for the following season. But meanwhile, you know, you know, even though he was sitting out a few games leading up to it, everybody's still paying for the finals, which are obviously priced high to begin with. Well, what type of protection do you have against just injury per se? A guy gets hurt during a series if they prepaid for the tickets. Yeah, thanks for that clarification question. So just sure. to clarify, we, we actually reimburse you no matter what the reason that the player sits out, whether it's load management or anything else. Okay. So whether the player gets hurt, whether they rest, whether they get suspended, uh, we, we cover all those different potential reasons for somebody missing a game. Yeah, I mean, you think about it. I mean, whether you get hurt, suspended, injuries, I mean, those are things that do happen. You know, and I, I've actually seen guys that lose a consecutive game streak because they got suspended. I mean, you can't if you're going to lose it. You know, I could go back. Well, of course, nowadays I don't think you really see it in the NBA because everybody's playing patty cake, patty cake, Baker's man. But when back in the time when I was covering it during the Bad Boys, you know, you wouldn't get away with half the stuff now that you did back then. That was another point. So. So the floor is really yours. Is there anything else, VJ, that we haven't discussed? Because now it's up to you to make sure that, indeed, uh, the I's are dotted and the uh, T's are crossed. This is yours, man. Yeah, no, I I think we touched on a lot of interesting things in in terms of the timeline and the genesis of the company and everything like that. But I guess what I really want people to know is that we, we are a data analytics sports company, right, or sports data analytics company. And what we do is predict when star players might sit out of games. We also are working on other things like uh, predicting potentially performance and uh, player props uh, and things like that. So there are there are a lot of different applications that are based on you know players, and there's also a lot of insights that you can generate from more scenario based uh, things, such as how your team does on the road against a plus or minus 500 team. You know, there, there's all these different applications that that we do, and so what I want people to know is you know we're not just doing the ticket protection. Oh, the ticket protection probably is of interest to you know most of the listeners who are fans who like going to games and and that was the whole genesis behind me starting the company but um there's a lot of different cool things that we're doing and you know feel free to come check us out on our on our website like i said 
Yeah, well, the bottom line is you're telling us that you're a very multifaceted company. Is that correct? Absolutely. Uh, data goes a long way and, and is of interest to a lot of different people. So, Well, being a longtime sports writer like I am, I tell you what, I've used stats to write many stories, talk on there many times, and without stats, you wouldn't have anything. How do you build up a guy if he doesn't have halfway decent numbers? i got to tell you a funny story years ago when I was in North Carolina doing play-by-play, and I was uh, dealing in the Deep South, so, you know, it's a different type of fan base. Well, you know, a lot of those individuals were happy that their kids did well, but when you have a professional broadcaster like me talking about how good they are from a statistical standpoint, my credibility enhanced greatly because there wasn't a general pat on the back. It was a pat on the back with a little bit of substance to it. And I think that anytime you load people up with a lot of data, it makes it a more convincing way to get your message across. Fans, just so you know you're listening, uh, to No Limits, and this broadcast will be heard on the Sports Exchange as well. My name is Scott Morgan Roth, alongside of me tonight, uh, well, out in California, VJ Shrava, Sh- and he's the founder and CEO of Fanshore. He does have a NASA engineering background, and he uh, works with Ticket Protection, which is a form of insurance. So for all you individuals that are investing into tickets, VJ's your man, because I'll tell you what, in this day and age, consecutive game streaks are just not the norm anymore. It's a much different era. Lou Gehrig would be turning over in his grave okay, if he ever had to deal with anything like this because you know, the blue collar era is over, folks. It's a much different animal than it is many, many years ago. So, uh, do you want to give your contact information again, VJ, before I provide ours? Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, you can reach us um, at info at fansure dot com. Uh, that's generally how you can get a hold of me or, or any of us on the team. Very good. Okay, and just you know, folks, why don't you give your Twitter information? I think a lot of people might be interested in that as well. Yeah. So, so our our uh, Twitter account is fansure underscore nba. And uh, my personal one is NBA underscore NASA underscore guy. So NBA NASA guy, my my colorful attempt at uh, giving myself a unique Twitter ID. Nothing wrong with that. Once I saw the NASA, I knew that when you mentioned NASA engineer, that was certainly a giveaway for that. As 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 the way to reach us here, you can reach us at Twitter at Tribune South. That's the at sign Tribune South. Uh, on Facebook, you can find us at South Florida Tribune. Instagram, South Florida Tribune gets it done. Have a YouTube channel. Maybe one of these days when I'm out in the Bay Area, we'll be able to do something together. Uh, the YouTube channel is the South Florida Tribune. Our website, www.southfloridatribune.com. We have a lot of good content there from our media distribution partners, columnists, and the broadcast can be located there as well. Our email address, you can get a hold of me at South Florida Tribune at gmail.com. You'll find me on LinkedIn, Scott Morganroth. Feel free to go ahead and connect with me. I'll be more than happy to go ahead and reach out to you there. You can find all of our broadcasts on the WSAN Network, uh, Sports Exchange, as well as No Limits. And these broadcasts can also be found wherever you uh, get your podcasts. So is there anything else you want to add, uh, Vijay, while we have you here? No, I just want to say it's been uh, it's been fun. Uh, we, we've covered a lot of ground here and uh, always nice talking to a sports fan so uh thanks a lot for having me again well i don't know if i ever viewed myself as a sports fan being in the i gotta tell you a funny story before we go off air and i say this with a lady that i dated many years ago she was a big miami heat fan and uh she bought a ticket and asked me to go with her so we're on the second level and she's looking at me vj while i'm staring right at the bench I see that uh, at that time, ironically, a Miami Heat game, and I'm staring there watching Eric Spolstra draw up plays, and I'm looking at the locker uh, room in the hallway, and she says to me, you know, Scott, can I ask you a question? I said, sure, what's that? Do you even know what it's like to even be a fan? I said, you know what, Michelle, I hate to tell you this, okay, I don't. I'm one of those kinds of guys that I get locked in when I go to a game. Shame on me for being that way. But when you've been in the business for 40 years and you've covered several hundred games and thousands a game, it's pretty hard for me to be a fish out of water when my mind is turning about who I can get in. But I can, that's why when I appreciate what a fan does pay when they pay for a lot of money, 
you know, I can appreciate everything that you're going through, and it just makes a whole lot of sense. And I think that I'm so glad that you took the time to spend with us tonight. And again, folks, you know, if I want to enhance the credibility factor a lot more, VJ has definitely talked to the best. Again, when you talk to NBC Sports, ESPN, NBA.com, just to name a few of them, you know, what he has is very real, and I definitely encourage you guys to go ahead and take it seriously. So, you know, again, VJ, I wish you nothing but continued success because I'll tell you what, as I mentioned here, this is not a gimmick. This is very, very real. And I think that's the one thing in this society that people have to understand, that there's a merit to something this credible. And I'm very happy that we've had a, a chance to address this pandemic or no pandemic it doesn't make any difference to me so on behalf of vj sharap my name is scott morgan roth the motor city madmouth hoping that you enjoyed this broadcast and we'll catch you on the next time good night everybody